fishing season for many of us now is done. Um, 13 days in. Because we have a state quota system. You can only catch so many pounds. Even some of the guys with the bigger quotas are done. Everything has come good this year. Um, I've been up since 3.30 this morning. It's now 10.40 at night. So I'm starting to drag. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's called fishing. Any fishery is like that. Sometimes you have good years. Sometimes you have bad years. Last year was absolutely terrible. Um, these same places you're going to see. You couldn't find eels. I was driving all the way over there. It's 25 miles, roughly, one way. Drive over there all season, from day one, March 22nd, all the way to June 7th, every day. Sometimes two trips a day. And couldn't get eels. There came a point where... The, uh, we have to report to the state every friggin' day what you get out of your net because they need a job, they need paperwork. So they want accurate numbers. I, I was a dick. I wrote accurate numbers 10 eels, 12 eels, 20 eels, 15 eels, 25 eels. Couldn't even weigh them, you couldn't even guess a weight. How much does one eel weigh? Beats the hell out of me. Let the friggin' biologists figure that out. So, they actually called me and <laughs> asked about that. Hey, you want accurate crap? There you go. That's how bad last season was. I didn't even come halfway on my quota. Uh, the guy you see in my other video, standing on the bank, I said, hey, you ugly sap. Real good guy, real hardworking guy. He's a farmer. Um, he gave up and pulled his gear before the end of the season because it wasn't worth him driving the distance he was driving. So he didn't quote her out. I don't think anybody really quoted out last year. It just was a bad year for him. And that happens sometimes. They're not endangered species. A set of parents. So to two eels, one mummy, one daddy. Make roughly 16 million little babies. Uh, that's a pretty good procreation rate. These things swim everywhere, up and down the eastern seaboard, into waterways. They swim into the Caribbean. They swim over into Europe. They're everywhere. We're the only state that fishes them, other than a very few nets. That are allowed down in South Carolina. I think there's 10 licenses. That they're not even putting a damper on them down there. It's heavily regulated. Um, even before this quota crap came up, it was regulated. So, there's plenty of them out there. So, this is the last video for this year about it. Because I'm done. Kind of wish, uh, you know, we didn't have the quota system. Because with these prices, uh, who wouldn't want to keep fishing? Back in the day, fishing at $25, $30, $40, $50 a pound, $75 a pound. Uh, when the state tells you, you can only get 4 pounds, or you can only get 10 pounds, or 15 pounds. It wouldn't even be worth going out these days because it would cost you more in fuel to go get that amount of eels but at least the price is up <coughs> yeah been a long day i'll tell you so i got sold off today and yep had to dump some extras back uh the guy there in my other video, in the other video that I was talking to on the bank, yeah, he's the guy that dumped about nine thousand dollars right back into the water this morning. 
the uh, only needed a little golf ball size to finish off his quota. Well, he he he's got two tags. He's been doing it since the nineties. So the state lets him fish two nets. I only get one net. Well, in his first net he checked, he he got plenty that he needed. So in his lower net, in the second net, that's where the four pounds was. Open it up, dump them, and just watch the money go down the brook. Because, I'm not, my God, we don't want too much money coming into the state of Maine. That would be terrible. Well... Got rid of some more eels today, so I'm on the home stretch now. Both tanks are getting pretty gross again. There's a few stragglers in here that I didn't get scooped out this morning. So rather than chasing around, I stuck the screen in there, and most of them are gonna kind of flush themselves out with the water and get caught up in the net. So that one's drained out. This one's filling back up. Four pounds to go. All right, truck tank is all reset, clean water, all ready to go. That's just fresh water. Um, eels are good and strong right now. They're doing good in the fresh water. It's been a real good year. Um, they're not weak. They're coming good, so everybody's doing good. Well, the water I just put in there is 45. The water in this bucket with the leftovers that I didn't get scraped out of the other two coolers is uh, 50. I might get away with it if I put them into there, but that five degree difference, I'm not gonna really like it. So I got about a half a pail of hot water right here. See what that does. And get up around 47 or so here, see what happens. Well, I guess I didn't need any more hot water. I overshot it. That's about 52 right now. And yeah, this, this bucket here is water and easy eels through the screen just get the eels and throw them in that core that core is gonna cool down to about 50 and they'll cool down with it and they'll be good well there's the scrapings that I didn't sell because I just wasn't farting around trying to get every last one out of the two tanks you got probably a tenth of a pound right there which doesn't seem like much, and it's not, when it comes to weight. But right now they are worth $2,150 a pound. A couple of fleas I get a grab. So a tenth of a pound at $2,150, uh, yeah, $2,150 a pound, uh, a tenth of a pound is, is worth a little bit of money. Well, they're nice and happy. A few of them are settling down. They like to group up like that. Those ones that are swimming now, they'll they'll go to bed here pretty soon. Just chill out. So doing the math, tenth of a pound roughly at the current price is $215. It's hard to believe that little bit is worth that much. 
there was a day we were fishing these things and that little bit was worth about two dollars four in the morning just got home things are going pretty good this year I'm gonna screen these out scoop them out of the trucks tank a little more time bringing them in here working on the rest of the fleas they couldn't get out in the river tonight but we're gaining well it's well after five in the morning now got these home down cleaned up mostly sun's starting to poke up it's time to go to bed Yeah, it's about 4.20 in the morning. Just dumped the net out. Some other guys got done today already, so everything below me is wide open. And the guy who was set up right behind me is gone. So, heading downstream, there's nothing in front of me. So I really picked up tonight. This should be the, this should be the last of it. I've met what the state lets me have. Got a bunch of krill. That's what that white crap is. Got some fleas. A few eels up in here to pick through, but most of them have swum themselves out through this screening mesh here. So I gotta dig through this mess and get the rest of the eels out of it, and I should be done. Well, we are two weeks into the 2022 season, and a lot of us are pulling our gear out. The season doesn't end until June 7th. The eels are coming thicker than hell. But uh, we swam them pretty good on this morning's tide. And uh, a lot of us quoted out. So the state says each individual fisherman is only allowed to catch a certain amount of pounds, and that's different for everybody. So once you get that allotment, you gotta get all your crap out of the water. If you catch anything over, you gotta throw it back in the water. So. I had to throw away over uh, $4,000 this morning, throw that back in the water. Um, another guy that fishes down here, yep, he got down here early and pulled his stuff out. He, uh, <laughs> he threw away about $8,000. He, uh, he was fishing right behind my net. He says, come take a look at this. So I walked over and we looked in his tail bag and there was about four pounds in there at 2,200 a pound. So that's what, over 8,000, it's roughly $9,000. Throw it away, dump it right back in the water. Can't sell it. So, <laughs> you gotta love that, kind of stings. So I just walked down here and Tides down. So now I gotta roll mine up out of here. So there's mine. Fished good. Had about four pounds in that thing this morning. Real good catch. Still got one guy way down low. That mountain you see way up right over there. That's Cadillac in Bar Harbor. Everybody knows where Bar Harbor is. So yeah, um, the tide before the last, there was a net uh, right off here in front of me. Uh, he quoted out yesterday, so he pulled his gear. And that's left me wide open here. That's what I sat on this morning's tide in the dark. So they had a good swim all the way up here in the mine. And that guy was right up in here behind me. He got the four pounds in his. So stream is pretty well empty here now. 
two weeks in. <laughs> you get a close up shop already. There it is. Just on the other side of that big rock, I would go way over my hip waders. Gotta be careful. Could put on chest waders. We do. So, figured out a long time ago the easiest way to move these things around is in a jet sled. Plus, it doubles up as a boat. So, you can drag it across the field, you can drag it down the bank. So, you get to go over across the other side. It floats, so you don't have to carry your net as you're walking across this type of stuff. So now I gotta drag this whole mess up to the truck and tomorrow I'll get it all stretched out in the yard and hose it down and clean it up and let it dry and put it away for next year. <laughs>